As Angular developers, we often work with RxJS and observables. Over time, we see common patterns emerging. In this session, we'll look at a few of these patterns, and along the way, I'll share some tips for working with RxJS. My name is Deborah Karata. I'm a software developer and Pluralsight author. Let's start off with a general tip for how to think about RxJS and observable pipelines. Consider what do you have, what do you want, and when do you want it? Here's our sample application. We want to display a list of products here on the left. So, what do we have? Well, starting off, we don't have anything. What do we want? We want that list of products. When do we want it? We want it when the page is loaded. Here's our classic pattern for retrieving data. Here's our service code. We have a get products method that issues an HTTP get request. It returns an observable of product array. What's our next step then? That comes to our next tip. We need to ensure each observable is subscribed and ensure each subscription is unsubscribed. So our classic pattern in our component, we wanted to retrieve the data when the page is loaded. So in the ng on init is where we do our subscribe. We store that subscription so that when the page is unloaded in our ng on destroy, we can unsubscribe. But what if we thought about this differently? What if instead of using a procedure, our get products, we instead declared a variable? So here we've got products dollar in our service instead, but it's set to the exact same uh, HTTP get request that we had in our method. The products dollar, that dollar sign is indicating that what we have here is an observable and not the actual data itself. So it's an observable of product array, not the product array. So in our component, instead of our ng on init and our ng on destroy and all of the extra code for managing our subscription, we could just have this. So we define another local variable products dollar and just assign it to our product service uh, products dollar. And uh, you could add some exception handling there. But what about our prior tip? How are we subscribing and unsubscribing then if we aren't <laughs> technically subscribing and unsubscribing. How do we deal with that? Well, that brings up our next tip, which is to use the async pipe. The async pipe automatically subscribes and automatically unsubscribes for us. So in our template, we have some code like this. So we have our products dollar that we're binding to from our component. We use the async pipe to uh, subscribe and unsubscribe to that for us. The as products clause defines the variable that the value is emitted into, and we can then use that va uh, value throughout our template. So here's our first declarative pattern, our declarative data access pattern. Starting at the bottom, we have our products dollar in our service. In the middle, we have our products dollar in our component, and then in our template, we're using our async pipe. I tend to do my um, marble diagrams more simplistically to sort of make a point a little bit more artistically. Um, so here is the data stream. It is then returning and emitting that set of data, our array of products. That uh, vertical line is identifying that it's done. Whenever we issue an HTTP request, it is one and done. It returns the response and then it's uh, finished. All right, so let's look at another one. We frequently end up having to pass data. So here in this example, we have way too many products to show the user. So we want them to pick some criteria. Maybe we want to do paging. Maybe we want them to pick a category. In this example, we're having them pick a category so that we're only showing products from a particular category. But this code as we have it written isn't going to work because where is that category ID going to come from? So what do we do? We start with our questions. What do we have? What do we want? And when do we want it? So what do we have? Well, the user's going to pick a category. So we have the category that they picked. What do we want? We want the set of products for that category. And when do we want it? Every time the user picks a different category, we want to go out and get those products. 
So we have an action of the user picking that category. How do we work with an action in RxJS? Well, to respond to an action, use a subject or behavior subject. That's our next tip. So a subject. The common pattern for doing a subject or behavior subject is this. When we issue an HTTP request, the HTTP service automatically creates an observable for us, and it automatically emits the response from that request into that observable. When we're dealing with our own actions, we need to define our own observables, and we do that using subject and behavior subject. So that first line is defining a private variable for our new subject. And the generic argument there is defining the type of item that's going to be emitted into that stream. Notice that we have the private keyword on there. We do that because we don't want any other part of the application, any other component or service, to be able to uh, emit values or potentially complete our uh, observable. But we still want to have the ability to access the read-only or observable part. And that's the purpose of the second line. So here we're defining an observable, notice the dollar at the end there, and we're setting it equal to our subjects um, observable using as observable. So what's the difference between a subject and a behavior subject? Well, with a subject, when you first subscribe, you don't get any initial value. You won't get a value until another value is emitted into the stream. For a behavior subject, if a value has already been emitted into the stream, you will get the last one. If no values yet been emitted, you get the default value, which is what you specify in the constructor of the behavior subject. Okay, so once we have our action stream, how do we get a value into it? Well, we emit it, we emit a value using next. So we use this dot category subject dot next and define whatever we want to be emitted into that stream, in this case, a category ID. So here's our pattern, our retrieve on action pattern. What do we have? We have a subject that is going to be notified every time uh, the user picks a category. What do we want? We want our products dollar, and that's what we're going to bind to our products dollar. What is that code going to look like there? As it's written here, there are two issues with this code. First of all, we have this inner observable and we're not subscribing to it. Remember that tip, we have to subscribe and we should unsubscribe. And second of all, maybe we don't quite know what kind of map to use here. So how do we solve these two problems? That brings us to our next tip, leverage your IDE. What do I mean by that? Well, without even running, you can hover over your values in your IDE. So here we're hovering over products dollar and you can see what their types are. So if we just used a map instead of a different kind of operator here, we would see that it would return us an observable of observable of product array. And that's not what we want. We need to flatten that. We just want the observable of product array to be um, emitted uh, from our products dollar observable stream. So how do we deal with that? Well, you guessed it, we have another tip. Um, to subscribe to an inner observable and flatten the result, use a higher order mapping operator. These are sometimes called flattening operators. What is a higher order mapping operator? Well, a higher order mapping operator is an operator that will automatically subscribe to your inner observable. It also flattens the resulting observable. So it will instead return observable of your type, not observable of observable of your type. It also automatically unsubscribes from that inner observable. Cool. All right, we're gonna look at three of uh, the common higher order mapping operators. First, there's switch map. Switch map stops the current operation and performs the new operation. Concat map performs each operation one at a time in order. And merge map performs each operation concurrently. Okay, so 
going back to our retrieve on action pattern. We have our action, and this is what our uh, pattern is going to look like here. So we have our category selected action. When it emits, we're going to use the switch map to take the category ID emitted from the action stream and issue our HTTP get. We can now then use our category ID in the URL. Why switch map and not one of the others? Well, switch map is good to use any time that the user could be changing their mind. So I'm gonna pick category one. Oh, no, I wanted category seven. What the switch map will do is even though it might start getting the data for category one, as soon as it sees the next item emitted, hey, I really wanted category seven, it will stop that first one, cancel it, and go ahead and execute then the retrieve for category um, seven. Okay. If we then hovered over products dollar, we'd see that it did correctly uh, flatten our observable. So we now have an observable of product array. So using our IDE, we can frequently check our types, which can be very helpful to ensure, especially as our pipelines get more complex, that each one is returning what we expect it to be returning. All right, here's my fabulous marble diagram for this. The user picks category with 42. The result stream has the products for 42. If they later pick 15, they get the new products for that. And you'll notice that there are no vertical bars on there. It will keep uh, emitting values as long as that page is displayed. It won't terminate the stream until the user leaves the page because of our async pipe. The next pattern is the shape on action pattern. So let's again ask our questions. What do we have? Well, in this case, now we have our list of products on the left. What do we want? We want to display the detail for the one product that the user picked. When do we want it? Anytime the user picks one on the left, we want to display that product on the right. Okay, so how do we do it? Uh, so here is our products. We already talked about this. This is the code that we just uh, finished talking about. And we want to change the shape of this based on an action, all right? So we already know the pattern for an action is to define a subject or behavior subject here. Now, if the user hasn't picked a product yet, we don't want to display anything, so we don't need any kind of default value. So that means we'll use a subject and not a behavior subject. So here is our product selected action. So now we have two streams. We've got our products and we've got our selected product. How are we going to work with the two of them together? That brings us to our next step. To work with multiple streams, use a combination operator. Combination operators combine multiple streams, just as, as the name uh, sounds. We're gonna talk about three of the most common one. Combine latest emits a combined value when any of the observables emit, and it won't emit until all observables have emitted at least once. So the nice thing is there, if you're doing multiple retrieves, it will not continue and try to work with all that data till it's actually received all of it. So that's great when you have to hit multiple endpoints to retrieve the data you need for an operation. Merge emits one value when any of the observables that are merged emits. Merge is best used when you're merging things of like types. For typing purposes, you really don't want to emit into the same stream, a customer and then an order and then odd things. What you would instead use it for is if you need to get customers from one endpoint and potential customers from another endpoint and you want to merge them into one list, you could use merge. And then there's fork join. The important thing to note about fork join is it only finishes, it only starts its uh, pipeline when all observables complete. So you don't want to fork join action observables because they're set up to not complete until you're leaving. Um, so when the all observables that you're joining complete, you emit the last value from each observable into an array. All right, so we've got our products, we've got our action, and we're going to combine them with combine latest. So there's our products, our product selection, and then we can use the find to find the one particular one that we want. Here is the marble diagram for that. So our data stream, the user says, I want product one, we're gonna get saw. The later, later go, 
if the user later picks uh, product three, they'll get the X. All right, so let's dive right into our last pattern, retrieve related data pattern. So let's talk through again our questions. What do we have? Well, we have a product. What do we want? We want that product's supplier. When do we want it? Anytime the product changes, we want to get the supplier. Now here we have two kind of sub patterns. One case when there's a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning every product has one and only one supplier, and one when there are multiple, when each product could have one or more uh, suppliers. So let's look at the first one first. So this is our retrieve related data pattern when there is a one-to-one -one relationship. So we have our selected product, we've seen that one before. And what we're going to do is pipe that one through another um, pipeline. And here we're gonna use switch map again, because the user could say, oh, I want product one, no, I want product seven, and it'll switch to the right one. And then we're issuing an HTTP GET request. And since we're using a higher order mapping operator, it will automatically subscribe to that inner observable for us and unsubscribe from it and flatten the result. But what about the case of having multiple? So here in this example, you can see that I'm returning multiple suppliers for a particular product. How do we do that? Well, this is not the best implementation, but I wanted to show this one first because it's a little bit easier to talk through. So here I have my selected product. I'm switch mapping again on the product, but this time now I'm taking the array of IDs that are stored with that product. I'm using from to define that as an observable so I can pipe it through some more operators. I'm using merge map here then to take each of those IDs and retrieve the data. Why merge map and not switch map? Well, let's talk through an example. If I had three supplier IDs, let's say for simplicity, one, two, and three. If I used a switch map, what it would do is go to get one and then see the second one and go, oh no, let's not get the one, let's get two, and then see three and then say, oh no, not two, three, and you'd only end up with the last one. If you used concat map, it would get one, wait for one to get back, get two, wait for two to get back, get three, wait for three to get back. Using merge map, it says, okay, I need one, two, three, and then it starts collecting them one, two, three. Now the last one, last line here is to array. Without to array, what this will do, and if we hovered over product suppliers dollar, we'd see what it would do, which is return an observable of supplier singular. It's gonna give us one at a time but we don't want one at a time. We want the set of them so that we can bind to that set. So that's why we're using to array so that it stops and waits for them to get collected. A better implementation of this is this here. So again, we're starting with the selected products. Again, we're switch mapping as the user could change the product, but now we're gonna use fork join. And what fork join will do is we're gonna take each of the IDs using the map. So we're using the array map taking each of the supplier IDs and issuing all those GET requests. And fork join will automatically subscribe to each one of them and wait for all of them to finish and then return the result as an array. And again, if we hovered over product suppliers dollar, we'd see that we were returning the right thing. All right, so on a picture, when the user picks a product, it's going to get the associated suppliers the fork join will wait till it gets all of them and then return the value. All right, so we looked at quite a few patterns here in this session. I hope that they were useful for you. And here are some links for more information. Thank you very much.